when comparing the Articles of Confederation government and the Constitution that replaces it, the executive branch setup is very different between the two of them. In fact, under the Articles of Confederation system, there is no executive branch. There's no national leader. And again, think about when this government was formed. It was formed in reaction to the negative experiences with England uh, and the negative experiences we primarily had with King George III. So when they designed their first government, they really paid careful attention not to put power back in the hands of an individual. But obviously the problem with not having an executive branch is there's nobody to enforce the laws, right? Uh, and when you don't have one person that has ultimate decision-making power, um, sometimes that causes like confusion, right? And um, inefficient decision-making. The constitution obviously tries to fix that. Uh, and there is definitely an executive branch that is created. And that executive branch is led by a single powerful president. Uh, the position of president is created. It was one of the most debated things at the Constitutional Convention, but they ultimately decided that a single powerful president leading an executive branch was necessary for like a healthy and strong government. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the year, but uh, there is no executive branch under the article system, and there is an executive branch under the Constitution led by a single powerful president.